Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is my review and discussion of Jane Austen's novel Persuasion. This is part of my 1818 novel project in which I read and review a number of novels that were published exactly 200 years ago. The idea is to see how the novel has changed, especially with regards to portrayals of female characters. For the full playlist of that project, click the link up here or in the description box. This one's actually a bit of a cheat because it was apparently published in December of 1817, but dated 1818, so I'm going to count it anyway. This is Jane Austen's final completed novel and it came out six months after her death. This book is often called Jane Austen's most mature novel and I can sort of see why. First of all, our heroine in this is a bit older than most of Jane Austen's main characters. Anne Elliot, middle child of a vain baronet with money issues, is 27 at the beginning of the book. She's also, as the book tells us over and over again, way past her prime. She has lost the bloom of youth and is on the way to becoming an old spinster. We find out that seven years before this book is set, Anne broke off an engagement to a handsome but poor naval officer called Frederick Wentworth. She was talked out of, or shall we say, persuaded to not marry him by her father as well as her family friend, Lady Russell. And now, years later, he suddenly comes back into her life. This comes at a time where Anne has to leave the family estate in the country with her father and her older unmarried sister because the family can't afford the upkeep anymore. So they rent out the place and move to Bath which was a fashionable holiday city known for its health and entertainment attractions at the time. The novel is split in two parts. The first one is set around the home of Anne's younger and married sister, Mary. The second part is set in Bath. In both parts, we encounter Captain Wentworth and Anne has to come to terms with her feelings about him. There's also the usual set of characters, including the handsome and newly widowed Mr. Elliot. He is the heir to the Elliot family fortune and therefore a very eligible match. There's the Musgrove sisters, who are a pair of silly but good looking and most importantly, single young women. And there's an old school friend of Anne's who knows all of the gossip in Bath. Anne Elliot is one of Austen's best written main characters. She's presented as a very caring woman and very polite and well-spoken, but as someone who knows her own mind and has strong personal opinions of the people around her. In the beginning of the book, she's very much overpowered by her father and her two sister. Elizabeth, the older one, is very cold and vain, whereas Mary, the younger, is totally over the top and very attention-seeking. Speaking of attention-seeking, hey Minerva! Hello. No, 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 don't eat that, don't eat that. So despite those two characters for sisters, Anne knows how to handle them very well. She's in control of the situation most of the time, even when Captain Wentworth being in the room makes her a tiny bit nervous. There's one scene in particular where one of the characters has an accident where Anne is the only person who keeps her calm in the situation. Throughout the book, she learns to keep to her convictions and not be so easily persuaded by others. I think another reason why this is called Jane Austen's most mature work is because the plot is very subtle. In many of Austen's works, we get a lot of drama um, and there's a lot at stake. It's either the family honor or the family fortune. But persuasion is altogether less dramatic. <coughs> the nervous trying to sit on my lap but falling off. So persuasion is altogether less dramatic, less passionate, more real. Anne Elliot doesn't just fall head over heels for Captain Wentworth. Before she commits to him, she observes, for example, her new friends, Admiral and Mrs. Croft, and they give her a positive example of a good marriage with a member of the Navy. 
She observes how they interact with each other and how they treat each other with respect. And she also sees how Captain Wentworth interacts with her and the other young single women around her. And she also examines his rival, Mr. Elliot, and questions her own opinions of him in a rational way. A lot of the book is based on interactions between the female characters. There's Anne's older mentor, Lady Russell, uh, the family friend who advised her against her engagement as a young woman. There's the friendship she strikes up with an old schoolmate of hers called Mrs. Smith, who is in pretty bad financial circumstances, but who Anne goes to for friendship and advice anyway against uh, the wishes of her family. There are many examples of women influencing each other, some for the better and some for the worse, like the dubious friendship between Anne's sister Elizabeth and the scheming Mrs. Clay. A lot of the plot of this book is decided by the actions of women rather than men, and in that, persuasion differs from some of the earlier Austen works too. But of course there is a romance, and that, I have to say, felt a little less passionate and a little less gripping than in, say, Pride and Prejudice or in Sense and Sensibility, Austen's earlier novels. Most of the action happens in the last quarter of the book, when we really get to root for her and Captain Wentworth. But before that, it's all very slow moving and he disappears for the majority of the second half of the novel. This leads to a kind of slowing down of the plot. A lot of the middle of the book is concerned with descriptions of Bath and Anne's social and family life while she's there. Luckily, this is a pretty short novel overall. So the slow middle doesn't take up too much of the book and the ending is just fantastic. There's a scene which includes uh, an overheard conversation and, uh, and then a secret letter passed to someone else that is so dramatic and tense and beautifully written that for me it comes close to the famous surprise proposal scene in Pride and Prejudice. Another aspect that is toned down a little bit in this book is the humour as compared to other Austen novels. While there is plenty of witty dialogue and some of those hilariously annoying characters that Austen writes so well, it's all a bit more muted, a bit more realistic and not as over the top. Overall, I really enjoyed Persuasion. I found the characters all very engaging and the plot, when it was moving forwards, was intriguing enough. I enjoyed the more polished and to the point writing and the more descriptive aspects as well. Rarely in Jane Austen do we get mention of so many aspects of everyday life, like descriptions of shops and streets, of servants and working people, of city life and of the countryside. All of this helped build a real atmosphere in this book, like I have not seen in any other Austen novel. I found the middle of it a bit slow and a bit dull, like I've said, but the ending more than made up for it, so I gave Persuasion four stars. I would recommend it to everyone, but I would not recommend it as a first Jane Austen read. I still think Pride and Prejudice or Emma are much more suited for that, because they're both a bit more fun and a bit more dramatic. Still, this was a wonderful novel and one I am certainly going to reread at some point. So, please let me know your opinions of Persuasion and if you also think it is Jane Austen's most mature work. Thank you for watching. Bye.